What does this say about Hollywood going forward? This was an $80 million budget. Yo. Eight Dude. zero million. Why the hell did we spend $250 million on Indiana Jones? If Why? you could do this with 87 million? Why? I don't get it. The thing is, these are filmmakers that care about their story. You could tell there's love behind it because we, this is a concept movie. Yeah, like you were saying, it feels almost like an indie movie, mm -hmm. just with mm -hmm. a bigger scale. The Sony FX3, you think about how the biggest guys in the industry right now are like, yeah, we're gonna use a prosumer camera. Hollywood has to step their game up. A hundred percent. After a movie like this, start trusting the filmmakers a little bit more. Hollywood, I hope that you're listening to us and the takeaway you should be taking from this movie is lower budget equals success and it allows creators to keep creating things. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Adler. My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man. Welcome to another, well, special episode yeah. of Calyx Encounter. We got a special guest today, my homie C-Man. The creator, directed by Gareth Edwards, cinematography by... Greg Frazier. Greg Frazier, ba the Batman the Greg Frazier. Greg Frazier. The Batman Doom. Greg Frazier. Doom Greg Frazier. Greg Frazier. Yeah. Following a Joshua who lives in a world where AI is prevalent. Like AI is just a normal thing yep. in this world. One group wants to keep AI, another group wants to embrace AI. And so this movie is an entire conversation of what is humanity? I guess we yeah. can say it that way. What's humanity and who's the judge of that? Yeah. If AI could feel as deeply as a human can. Because that's the, that's the thing I thought that was fresh about it, right? Was that mm -hmm. look at humanity and like what humanity actually means. And I, I mean, and we, that's something that like we've seen in some of the other ones that you were talking about. But yeah, like it's that that's the piece, right? Where it's like you've got AI very much like we are right now. Just imagine way in the future. Mm -hmm. But people are like, yes, no. And yeah, you're go Yeah, I like I like where you're getting there. Yeah. But the thing I think the thing about this movie that makes it work so well is the time it takes to world build. Yes. The world building in this movie, the, that's the only reason. When I say group A and B, one wants AI, one doesn't, it's a little bit deeper than that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because if you want to, you could watch the movie at a surface level, Yeah. but then you could clearly see jabs at where we are in real life. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know? And I think that's why this movie works. Um, if I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this movie's for everyone. Like, no, if, no, it definitely won't be. Because if you're the type of person where it's just like you want to be in and out of a movie, no. But if you're the type of person that A, loves sci-fi, B, just likes things that you could think about and ideas that we're currently dealing with yeah. today, mm. it's, you're going to, me personally, I yes, loved it. Yes, absolutely. Same here. I think you're going to love it. Yeah. Like, but there's... You got to be in that mindset. Like, it's one of those things, like, we live in this world, and like you said, it's very relevant. AI, mm -hmm. it's a major part of the movie. Mm -hmm. And the look... And like the way they play with AI and that concept and the way we've seen it played with in sci-fi before, there's like almost like similar beats, but Edwards is looking at it in a completely different way in some elements. You know? Like I've never gotten emotionally attached to a movie. You sure? No, well that's I'm not true. I'm gonna challenge you. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah, you already got you me. Sure? You already got Here's me. Here's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. This is her ex machina. Mm. I'll throw in a little bit of Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, the perspective that you're going through with John David Washington. I, like I said, I think there are beats that kind of are reflective from other sci-fi, but the way we're traveling with him is something that felt new to me. And you know what I was thinking about? In watching this movie, I know someone out there, you, you might understand where I'm coming from. I know mm. someone out there has to understand what I'm saying, because I might sound crazy for this. <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna sound crazy. If this movie came out in like 1989, 1999, between that time period, uh, in anime form, this would oh, have been oh. Akira Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, okay. That is exactly yeah. what I saw Yo. from, you know, people online Yo. are talking about scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, just the, the big giant door that opens up and then it's the kid. It, these are all stuff in the trailer. Yeah. Um, but there's just certain shots that are reminiscent of Akira. And it's just like, I don't even think it's, that. it's not just live action stuff they're no, drawing yeah, from. Yeah, no, yeah. You, you can, know? You can, you can feel the, the wealth 
of background that Edwards has consuming this type of media. Like something you said to me when we first came out. There's a movie that came out this year that was directed by Neil Blomkamp, mm -hmm. Gran Turismo. Mm -hmm. Really good movie if you haven't seen it, check it out when it hits streaming. Um, you'd almost think Gareth Edwards would be more likely to do that movie. 100%. And you watch this, and this feels like Neil Blomkamp sci-fi. 100%. And I kept forgetting who's directing it, because when I'm watching the trailers, I'm like, oh, yeah, Neil Blomkamp's dropping another... Oh, no, because right after, yep. they play Gran Turismo, and I'm like, oh, why didn't my, you do this? Yeah, my brain. This was your movie. But it's cool. It's cool. I still haven't seen Gran Turismo. I don't know why. You get traces of it. I, I don't want to spoil anything, yeah. but when we left the theater, I was like, I want to make sure his mental health is okay. Mm, yeah. I want to make sure he's good as a human. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like, you didn't have to make me feel the way I felt, bro. Yeah. Like, that's Dude, just. Absolutely. I didn't expect that. No. Leaving the theater, yeah. I was holding back tears. Yep. Like, it, I've only, I, I, I honestly, District 9, her is the type of movie where it, it kind of made me pissed. Cause uh, I'm like, oh, she's yeah. cheating on him. It's not yeah. really, no, but you know, like, but it's like, oh, yeah. she cheated yeah. this whole time. <laughs> with District 9, it was like, the wife and the... Yeah. With this one, it's like... <sighs> it's, and it's, I'm, I don't know about you, I love anytime storytelling can come like full circle. And the full circle journey that he sends John David Washington's character on. Mm -hmm. Like, you just, I was like, Fuck you, Gareth Edwards. Mm -hmm. I wasn't planning on crying tonight, but now I'm sitting here like a baby wiping tears away yeah. from my face like I do all the time. One thing that we need to commend this movie for is the fact that this was an $80 million budget. Yo. Eight Dude. zero million. Can I tell you? This is why I, I, I was locked in as soon as I saw the trailer. I saw 30 seconds of, of frames and went, well, this is the prettiest movie I've seen all year. Mm -hmm. Why the hell did we spend $250 million on Indiana Jones? If you Why? could do this with 87 million. Why? I don't get it. It makes no sense. Why? And, Why? And like you were saying, scale. The scale in this movie with that, but like, I don't, I don't understand why we have to be throwing hundreds of millions of dollars around. It's because the thing is, these are filmmakers that care about their story, that actually care about the project. Yeah. And it's, I, you could tell there's love behind it because we, this is a concept movie. Yeah, like you were saying, like it feels almost like an indie movie mm -hmm. just with mm -hmm. a bigger scale and a budget to match the scale of what that is. So you pointed out to me that the producer, like one of the producers on the film is Greg, Greg Frazier. Frazier. Yeah. And I'm like, where do you usually, like you don't usually see a DP also producing a film unless it's an independent film yep. and they really want to get this ball rolling. Yeah. And, you know, I was even watching some of the behind the scenes and they were saying, Gareth Edwards, he also likes to operate the camera himself. Yeah. They went ahead and used a prosumer camera. We could go out and buy this camera right now. Yeah. It's, it usually is backordered, but the Sony FX3, you think about how the biggest guys in the industry right now are like, yeah, we're going to use a prosumer camera. There's no excuses for us as filmmakers no, anymore. No, there isn't. The this, tech this so busts the doors down. So yeah. what does this say about Hollywood going forward? John David Washington. And he's one of them where I don't feel like people talk about him enough, especially because I feel like he's been in a bunch of action-oriented things mm -hmm. or smaller things that people didn't see. Mm -hmm. But he's got the capability to just, like, grab you right away and be like, come with me. And he's, like, he's not on his daddy's level, uh -huh. but he's got them, them Washington jeans, man. And there's something about when he's on camera where you're just like, I'm captivated by, like, I want to, yeah, more. Okay, yeah, I'm following you. And like, mm -hmm. that, when you can get an actor like that, then you can fill, you don't have to fill big name stars after that, right? Like, you can get good supporting, Whoa, lower budgeted actors. so true. And you let your star, your lead, be the one that carries it there, and that's your name. Boom, hey, John David you Washington, Gareth Edwards. my mind. Man, let me tell you something. If we want to talk about cinematography and VFX, I think the reason why this movie feels so grounded and has the scale that it has is because, yes, it's shooting on a digital format. And it's also shooting on a prosumer camera. So the sharpness won't be as much as like maybe in Ari, but it works because we're talking about the future, right? And you, you 
take out the sanitized look of a digital sensor mm. and you run it through film. Yeah. That's what it seemed like he did. Very similar to how he did the yeah. Batman process yeah. and Dune. He did it again with this, but then you also take the natural lighting. That's one of the reasons why they use this camera. With the Sony FX3, that camera captures light and Sony's a beast when it comes to low light. Yeah. And so they were able to get those dusk shots. They were able to get those mm. dusk shots. They were yeah. able to get all of those wide master shots where the sun is setting and all because the, the camera has so much dynamic range yeah. and picks up on a lot of light. And so when you have something like that where it doesn't feel super polished, but it looks beautiful, yeah. it feels naturalistic. So it takes on the District 9 look a feeling like a documentary, yeah, you know? Yeah. And then the VFX is just a perfect blend because now you have a director that came from visual effects. So it's no longer Indiana Jones where you could see the halo in the yep. car yep. and uh, because the director doesn't know what he's doing, Yeah. right? It's a director that's like, this is a part of the process. Yeah, like you said, like you got someone like Gareth Edwards who comes from a visual effects background uh -huh. Now when he's behind the camera and he said he already knows like okay the best way that this is gonna like he knows what the back end is you know and I love when you get creators that have whether they've mastered things or not but they're involved in all the steps because then when you're behind the camera it's like well this shot we need to make sure we're here because we're gonna do this in post mm -hmm. and that I bet you is where you get some of those like oh man we gotta do, go back and reshoot because the things we're trying to do with the visual effects ain't matching with what we got going mm -hmm. on here mm -hmm. and you can see the way like Edwards is shooting this movie the visual effects are in his head like he's thinking about it with what he's doing with Frazier and how they're moving the camera and setting up things and it's like I just I love when you can see that coming to life mm -hmm. and then he's just able to take you on this ride where it's like yeah man like you can make the visual effects pop and the other thing that I always think really helps when you're in a highly visual effect movie especially on the CG end is mm -hmm. that collaboration with the practical 100%. and the practical yeah. sets yeah. and the sets designs on this movie blend so well with what they're doing on the, the you know the, the CGI visual effects side mm -hmm. And like that is where it's like, yeah, you know what? There's a tangible thing here that they're touching. And then when shit starts running, now it's not there, mm -hmm. but your mind is now tricked because like, well, I've seen the physical piece. Yeah. And the blending in this movie is like, like I said, you can, you can look at this movie just as like a fan of film and an appreciation of how you make a movie. Hollywood has to step their game up. A hundred percent. After a movie like this, when you have an $80 million budget, I'm not saying stop giving out movie budgets, but I'm saying start trusting the filmmakers a little bit more mm -hmm. because you can no longer, it's, it's not sustainable anymore. No. You can no longer keep giving us the, the shitty Star Wars movies. I, Hollywood, I hope that you're listening to us and the takeaway you should be taking from this movie is lower budget equals success and it allows creators to keep creating things and mm -hmm. that's like the one thing I think you always see from like an audience reception to something is when you walk out of the movie and go that was that writer director's movie mm -hmm. I didn't feel the studio anywhere in that yo that's true that's and that's true. what that's what Hollywood needs to start doing is trusting its creators that like if they come with a vision go all right here, what do, you, what do you need to make that happen? If you are a fan of sci-fi at all, especially yeah. like the, I, I wanna use the term contemporary sci-fi, mm -hmm. right? If yeah. you are a fan of Black Mirror, any of this, you are going to love the creator. If you're a fan of film, I think this is the perfect segue into Oscar season. Yep. That's what this movie is. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna get an Oscar. No, it's not gonna get talked about in that way, but mm -hmm. like we've been talking about, this is a movie where if you just love film, even if you don't connect with the story, you're gonna walk out going like, yo, there, there were things in this mm -hmm. movie. And like, one of the things that we were talking about, right, is like, you talk about like the emotional ride you go on. And like you would say like, I, I wanna make sure like, you know, my man Gareth Edwards is okay. Yeah. The last shot of the movie, no, it's not a spoiler, mm -hmm. but pay attention to the last shot and what happens in that last like five seconds, that to me is everything that the movie is trying to elicit and get out of its audience. And that when I, like it, I, it and like it, 
cuts right and i was like yeah yes that yeah. that's what the movie was you know and it's like you're trying everything to like everything about that movie was in that shot yep and it's like that whole full circle mm -hmm. i love full circle story so it's like not spoiling anything but y'all or know you get to the end you see that shot you're gonna be like Oh, I see what, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep. And like, that's that's the type of shit that I love about this movie, where if you're a fan of film, this should speak to you. If you guys saw the movie, go ahead, comment down below, what did you think? I'm very excited about this episode because we got a very good friend here. Thank you so much for having me on, man. No, it was a lot of fun. Dude. I was saying no, to you yeah, like, yeah, when we were I'm walking not... up, I was like, yo, I'm kind of pumped to get in the studio. <laughs> I've seen it so many times. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Qua, I hope you understand. Like, I, I I did my best to respect your seat. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I knew where I was sitting at. Like, I, even, like, I can see, like, the, the return over here. I'm like, I, I'm right in that Quan zone. So, like, I, I I gave it everything I had for you, man. But, yeah, so, so thank you so much for it. Like, when you were like, yo, you want to record? Bro. I was yeah, like, no, let's, let's do it. Yeah, yes, yeah, let's yeah. go, man. Let's I'm here it, man. for it. Look, guys, I'm going to leave. All of C-Man's information down in the description below. Please check out his channel. He has some really great reviews there. Thank you. Thought-provoking stuff. So I think if you like them here, you're going to love them over there. Please check that out. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys for checking out this episode. And if y'all don't bang that freaking like button on this episode, you're doing something wrong, man. My guy Adler over here, like, yo. I love talking movies with you. Yo, 100%, bro, 100%. I'm glad you guys checked out the episode, and we'll see you in the next encounter. Peace. Peace.